welcome you here. I got it. What I'd like to say is just acknowledge the land that we're on. So acknowledge that we are on the unceded territory of the Sunamo First Nations people. We are grateful to be here and hosting this event here, and are thankful to be able to do that uh, this evening. And welcome to all of you. So Pecha Kucha. How many of you have been to a Pecha Kucha before? Okay, so the rest of you are newbies. So welcome to Pecha Kucha. I would like to acknowledge in the room our uh, students. If you could just, students who have been involved in planning this event. So this has been an experience for them in event planning and we are excited to have them um, be hosting of this event. So all of the students that were involved in planning, can you raise your arms and wave? And they are going to be behind you. Life actually is not linear. 
life encircles us and gift of life encircles us and we participate in that circle with the gift of memories. We can draw from our memories the gift of gratitude, savor your memories, even miraculous goodness of your life stretching back many, many, many years. Gift and exchange is timeless and that is our theme tonight for Pecha Kucha. And I welcome you and thank you for being here. And on that note, I would like to <clears throat> ask our first speaker to join us, Eggie Will. Eggie is a... Eggie. <laughs> Eggie's topic this evening is Ghana Research and Study Tour, A Decade of Unexpected Gifts. Eggie is a fellow colleague of Rob and myself, and also Sharon and Suzanne. Tom, is there any other? Garrett, Garrett. Ken. Ken Hammer, um, Amanda's here, sorry, I, I just grabbed here. We're all here, we're all here. We can play together and we work together. Um, as a professor in the Department of Recreation and Tourism Management at Vancouver Island here, Eddie is fortunate enough to live a life of learning, adventure, and exploration. She's also honored to live, work, and play on the unceded territory of the city of
individuals who suffer from the greatest level of time poverty, which also leads to economic poverty, yet they make time in their incredibly busy schedules to meet with us. They've also taught us the absolute value of artisanship, whether it's making cotton or shea butter, and that, that is the foundation of economic development, the traditions, not new ideas coming from the West. These women are incredible, and I'm honored that they have chosen to share their stories. My students have taught me so much. They've taught me about their capacity for helping others, their capacity to learn, their capacity to work in unbelievably inhospitable situations. Um, they produce reports that have made differences in communities. God has taught me that no matter how far I travel, things are the same. My family's in fishing. I have been introduced to fishing practices within the Canadian uh, countryside, whether it's the ocean like this one or uh, uh, freshwater in the north, and I've learned that we're just the same. The people in the house of the village uh, that's depicted here make nets exactly the same way that my grandfather and my uncles taught me how to make nets when I was a children. They smoke fish the same way that we smoke fish here. The more I travel, the more I learn that we are the same. We are just one people on this planet, and that makes a huge difference to how I approach my teaching and my work. The biggest lesson God has taught me is colonialism. I really didn't have an understanding of what that meant in Canada and what that looked like. God had taught me that. This is a slave castle, and it is the, the site of such incredible atrocity. And I forced myself, because it's not a fun trip, I forced myself every year, and my students go with me, and we learn. But we also learn about resilience. This is right beside that slave castle. This would have been a beach of absolute torture in the past. Now it is a sign of resilience. It is an active, vibrant fishing village. And the, on other days, this would be filled with children and people bringing in the nets, but also playing football and just enjoying life. I figured you wouldn't like me if I didn't put to Africa a lot. <laughs> but also, this is the gift that Africa has given to me. I grew up on Vancouver Island. I grew up with a father who taught me the value of, of watching these kind of earth style movies and I, he, he instilled in me an absolute dream of going to the African continent to see these animals in the wild and that's a, one of the gifts that I've been given through this position and through uh, my work there. To be able to bring this passion back and share it with children here is one of the ways that I exchange that gift. Um, so I have lots of friends who have kids